Happy Thursday, everybody. This is Pastor Landers, and welcoming you to another uh, episode of Thursday Night Thrive. Hope you've been blessed today. Hope you had a wonderful week so far. We're ready to dive into the word, dive into this lesson. And before we do that, I always want to thank you for tuning in. I uh, pray that you had a good drive home or a restful day. Uh, whatever was going on in your life, I pray that at this moment that you are settled, that things around you are in a place where you can hear and receive from the word of God. As always, I love all of you who tune in every week to hear these teachings and the word of the Lord, especially those who come and visit us whenever you're in the Atlanta area, the Riverdale area, always know that you have a standing invitation to come and join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. at Charles Drew High School. Listen, I'm excited about part three of this teaching on listening, the four bars of effective listening. But before we dive into it, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Just get our spirits right, settle in our environments so that we can hear and receive from the word of the Lord. Every head bowed. Father, thank you for another day of life. Thank you for another opportunity to worship together in a unique setting. We thank you for the airways. We thank you for social media. We thank you for all of the tools that you give us to get the word out. But more importantly, that we can connect and come together, worship the Lord, pray with one another, open up the scriptures and get revelation that brings us information and inspiration that transforms our lives. Thank you for our time together tonight. We pray that the lesson would inspire and impact someone in a positive way. And all in agreement with that prayer, shout amen. Well, we've been talking about listening and um, we talk about the four bars of effective listening. The first is receptivity. It's important that we know the ABCs of receptivity. We have to understand and acknowledge the power of silence, be aware of our own biases and then control our emotions. Uh, the second bar that we talked about was empathy. We have to be able to feel one another, to understand one another. And at the intersection of our understanding one another, we find and chart a way forward. We find common ground. Today, we want to examine bar number three. And bar number three is kind of closely tied to empathy. It's called feedback. And so it is important that we understand that empathy has to be demonstrated. And the way that you demonstrate empathy is through the right kind of feedback. Let's give you our scripture as we start out. And then we're going to delve a little bit into this thing called feedback. The book of James, chapter 1, um, verse 19 and 22, reading from the Message Bible, the word of the Lord declares, post this. At all the intersections, dear friends, lead with your ears, follow up with your tongue, and let anger straggle along in the rear. <clears throat> it goes on in verse 22 and says, don't fool yourself into thinking that you are a listener when you are anything but letting the word go in one ear and out of the other. Act on what you hear. So we understand that most people aren't as effective in listening as we think we are. And so we need to get uh, to a place where we put that extra effort into actively and intentionally listening more than we speak. And so we understood last week it's important for the person that you're listening to to feel you and to have a sense of understanding that they are actually feeling or empathizing with me. How does that happen? How do you demonstrate empathy? There is nothing more important to a person who is trying to convey their feelings to you than them understanding that 
I believe they're hearing me. I believe they're feeling me. I believe that they're connecting with what I'm saying. It leads to a deeper connection and greater understanding. How does that work? There's first things that I call non or, or affirming cues. These cues are nonverbal cues. They're something that affirms that I'm feeling. It gives evidence to the person that's listening to you that I'm connected, I'm empathizing. It's called an affirming nonverbal cue. What does that mean? It's a physical synergy. It suggests unity, uh, connection, or cooperation between two parties. And what does that look like? You give uh, nonverbal cues that you are empathizing, you're feeling someone with body language. Uh, please understand that when you're trying to listen to somebody, you've got to be aware of your facial expressions. Uh, and that's something that's kind of difficult to get a hold of, but it is so important not to be frowning while you're listening to someone or not to have that stank face when they're trying to tell you something that's on their mind. You have to check your facial expressions, body language. What do I mean by body language? As they're talking, it's always good to nod your head in affirmation. Yeah, I hear what you're saying because that is connecting with the individual. You're feeling them. You're empathizing with them. You're creating a synergistic relationship between what they're saying <clears throat> and they see a real physical connection in you, it tells them I'm engaged. So this nonverbal cue, body language, the head nod, here it is, eye contact. It's very difficult for someone to feel like you're connected with them if you're looking somewhere else, if your eyes are following other people who are walking past or looking off or looking up and not looking directly at them and feeling with them and moving with them and connecting with them. You don't have to say a word, but your body language, your uh, non-verbal cues speak volumes to the person who's speaking to you because it lets them know that they really are listening. And so those are non-verbal cues. <clears throat> After that, to affirm and demonstrate that I am empathizing, I am connecting, you need to do what is called verbal cues. Verbal cues allow the other person to know, okay, this person really was listening and paying attention to what I was saying. How do you give them a verbal cue? I call it paraphrasing. Uh, when someone is pouring out their heart, someone is speaking to you and telling you how they feel, what's on their mind, uh, it is good for you to, at a point after or in a, a point in between, if you're shaking your head, yeah, understand that. Paraphrase, that means repeat what has been said. Sometimes verbatim. If it's not in verbatim, it's a clear summary of the important points that the person has expressed. Uh, uh, for women, this is key. They want to know you heard them, and the best way you can let them know that you heard them, what did I just say? Tell me what I said. Say it. And matter of fact, if you could put some emphasis in the same place that they put the emphasis, now you ain't got to shake your head and roll like they do because we can't. But if you can connect your nonverbal cues with the verbal cue of paraphrasing, <clears throat> repeating back what it was. Uh, that she just said or he just said. It's not just something that women want men to do. Men need to hear these uh, verbal cues, paraphrase, summarize what was being said. There's no better way for someone to know that you heard them than to know that you can repeat or recite or paraphrase the essence of their feelings back to them. That is a powerful verbal cue. The other verbal cue is open-ended questions. What is an open-ended question? A question that is designed that when you ask, it encourages someone to give you a full and meaningful answer that includes all of their emotions, all of their knowledge, all of their feelings. It means that you ask them such a question, how does that make you feel? And then they have now this blank, grand blank canvas to tell you how they feel. They can give you all the emotion, they can give you all of their knowledge and understanding because you ask an open-ended question and now they can pour themselves into it. You couple that with paraphrasing, you couple that with asking a question where they can again repeat how they feel and they're not restrained and how they tell you the answer, then that is another cue that you are actually hearing, you're actually interested in what I have to say. Uh, as opposed to an open-ended question, it is also important to ask 
specific or closed-ended questions, which encourage short answers, yes or no, uh, did that make you angry? Now you're narrowing that down to a specific thing, specific answer, yes or no. And so open-ended questions, um, um, closed-end questions are part of verbal cues that will give someone evidence that you empathize. You can, you can shake your head, you can have the body language, you can connect in all of those ways, but to really drive it home, you have to give them these cues, verbal cues, ask questions, repeat what was said, and now you're on your way to really connect it. It's been solidified. I have absolutely heard what you said, and I got proof that I heard what you said because I can repeat what you said. I can ask you pertinent questions that lets me know that I heard specific details or that I gave you the ability to respond to me. Now, here's the thing. You have to be willing to be comfortable enough and courageous enough to watch this now, take the response you get to the questions that you answer, that you ask them. If you ask them a question, you got to be comfortable enough to deal with them. Uh, when they tell you how they feel, uh, they may confront you. They may confront the way you look at things and it may be completely different. You got to be ready to receive that. And here it is, be willing and ready to reserve your opinion for later. I'm going to just let that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to set that right there because we are so pre-programmed to give our opinion, to give our response. But at this moment for this uh, exercise and this bar to really work, you've got to give these verbal cues and you have to ask open-ended questions. And when you ask an open-ended question, you need to be open to the answer. You need to be open to what's going to be said, what's going to be stated. And it takes courage to sit and to receive what someone is pouring out and has to say without interrupting, without giving your opinion, and without trying to, here it is, um, uh, direct their feeling, redirect their feeling, or explain to them how they're feeling. They're more equipped at telling you how they feel than you are. It's our job, it's the listener's job to interpret, to receive, to be receptive, to be open, to be empathetic, and to give them these cues that I am connecting. But best believe me, you need to be prepared for something to be said that might rub you the wrong way, that might come across in a way you didn't, uh, or you weren't prepared for, and you didn't have a combat. Bite your tongue, sit back, process it, and then hear it. Now, there may come a time where here it is, they'll ask you, what do you feel about what I said? Now you can give your opinion, but only then and only after they've opened the door, they've given you the floor to express your opinion and your response. That's the dialogue that begins, but it all starts with our willingness to demonstrate empathy, verbal, Nonverbal cues, connection, body language, a nod, eye connection, fixing your face, get your face together. And sometimes we have a problem understanding that our mind and our heart aren't lining up with our facial expression. And it takes effort to make sure that those things are connected and have synergy. And then be a person that can paraphrase what it says, summarize verbatim or bullet points, but make sure you capture and repeat what the other person has said. Ask open in questions so that they can pour it all out. Close the in questions that it can give specific answers to how they feel and be ready for the questions when they come and be willing to reserve your opinion for another time. Or if they ask you for it, be willing to give it in love and in a calm and collected way and watch your ability to listen and communicate go to levels that you never imagined possible. Amen? Well, <clears throat> I hope these little tips help you. This is the third bar that strengthens our receptivity, that heightens our ability uh, to listen well and be effective in our listening. So I hope it was a blessing to you. I hope it gives you some tools in your toolbox that makes life a little bit easier. 
that we can remember how to effectively demonstrate that we are really empathetic to what someone is saying and trying to express. I believe if you practice these things and put them into something that you do regularly when you talk to your spouse, your significant others, friends, coworkers, uh, the people that you are deal with day to day, you will find your relationships will get that much stronger and you'll really eliminate a lot of misunderstanding and miscues in your relationship with one another. Amen, amen. Listen, let's pray and go before the Lord that he will seal uh, what has been said in this lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for teaching us how to listen, how to lead with our ears and follow up with our tongue. Teach us to be effective listeners and more importantly, be empathetic listeners. And Father, we know that empathy must be demonstrated. And we will demonstrate our empathy with affirming verbal and nonverbal cues. We will learn how to paraphrase. We will learn how to ask open-ended questions. We will learn how to ask closed-ended questions. We will be prepared to listen to an answer and reserve our opinion for later. And we will be mindful of our body language, our, our, our ability to connect, eye contact, mindful of our facial expressions so that the person who is speaking feels connected. We thank you that these principles will become part of our everyday existence and our relationships will go to the next level. We thank you and praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Listen, I hope these practical tips based on spiritual principles are a help to you. Uh, don't just keep them to yourself. Share them with somebody else. Uh, this is here. Uh, it'll be on our uh, iThrive app. It'll be up on our YouTube page. You can always share that with someone. If it's a blessing to you, share it with them. Let them see, hey, uh, I believe this will bless you because it blessed me. And we are able to send the word, the good news, the gospel. There's wonderful instruction out to people that we can be a more connected society. And again, as always, this has been a blessing to you. And don't forget to sow. Don't forget to give. Don't forget to make sure you never let your generosity or never let your stewardship go on vacation. If you're out of church or out of town, always remember you can text to give 77977. Type I Thrive CC in the message field. Go to the Givelify app or just log on to the I Thrive app. And you can participate in the wonderful blessing called giving. Well, I'm looking forward to part four. Tune in next week. And we'll conclude this powerful, powerful series. I love you to life, beloved. And I'll see you next week. I pray.